follow me. You need to see something special. All the world is made of stories, and all of those stories are right here in the Book of Life. Hey everybody, let's talk about the Book of Life, shall we? Uh, this movie takes place many, many years ago in the town of San Angel in Mexico and begins on the Day of the Dead when everyone in town has gathered to celebrate and pay their respects to their long-lost relatives. And on this day, the two uh, gods who are in charge of the Land of the Dead, La Muerte and Hibalba, who are in charge of the Land of the Remembered and the Land of the Forgotten, respectively, have come up to the surface to watch the festivities, and while they're up there, Hibalba's like, you know what, I'm getting really sick of being in charge of the Land of the Forgotten all the time, because it's all doom and gloom and depression, and your place, the Land of the Remembered, is pretty much a party 24-7. And I'm thinking I want some of that, so... Here's what we're gonna do. You see those three kids down there, Manolo, Joaquin, and Maria? Okay, one of those two guys is gonna marry that girl someday, so why don't we place a bet on which one it's gonna be? And if I win, we get to trade places, and I become the man in charge of the Land of the Remembered. And La Muerte says, okay, you're on. And of course, this does not end well, because bets between gods never end well. I don't know why they have to keep doing this. Nothing good ever comes from it, but anyway... Eventually, Manolo, Joaquin, and Maria all grow up, and looks like Manolo is about to win the bet for La Muerte, because Maria is gravitating towards him. Hibalba ain't happy with that, so he decides to cheat, and through a bit of trickery, he ends up killing Manolo. And so he winds up in the Land of the Dead, and has to navigate his way through there and find La Muerte to... Tell her, hey, Hibalba just played you, and try to get some assistance in getting back to the land of the living so he can be with his one true love. And meanwhile, back on the surface, not all is well in San Angel because they have some bandits that are constantly raiding the town and causing trouble, and they have to find a way to fight them off. First thing to say about this movie, good. God, the animation is good. Holy shit, nicely done real FX. Um, now the... Basically, the way this story is told, it's, uh, in a way, it's kind of similar to The Princess Bride in that uh, it's basically a story that's being told to children and the audience is just kind of along for the ride. Um, in this case, it's being told by a museum tour guide to a group of kids who are some particularly annoying kids in a way. They're, they're the detention kids. So they get the special tour away from anyone else so they don't cause trouble, I suppose. Um, but fortunately, they're not too annoying because their time on screen is kept short. They never really outstay their welcome. And, and they do have a few funny lines here and there. But anyway, um, she's telling the story by using these little wooden figurines to represent the characters. So anytime we actually see the story being played out, all of the animated characters look very much like these... Uh, um, wooden figurines, and the amount of detail that went into all of them is fantastic. It looks amazing, uh, just the way these characters are shaped and the little shades of the wood and all the lines that go into it, and the, the use of color through the land of the remembered, which everything is just bright and colorful and looks like, well, it's a 24-7 party, basically. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, and all the dark, gloomy, and smoky textures in the Land of the Forgotten and the earthy tones of the, uh, the town of San Angel. Everything just looks fantastic. Oh, man. And looks really good in 3D as well. I, I did spring for the 3D surcharge, and I definitely cannot say I wasted my money. It looked amazing. Uh... Characters are also a lot of fun. Uh, Manolo, who is one of the two guys vying for the love of Maria, uh, he is uh, comes from a family of bullfighters and is being pressured by his father to be a bullfighter himself. But really, he just wants to be a musician and play his guitar and make beautiful music for the rest of his life. And of course, that doesn't sit well with Dad. Although, when he eventually finds his way down to the Land of the Remembered and meets many of his old relatives and sees all the former bullfighters in his family. Looks like maybe he had the right idea because so many of them have died horrible, horrible deaths in the ring. I mean, in the most... There's a lot of people who die in this movie. I mean, it is 
it is about the land of the dead, but they all die in very comedic ways. Like, he talks to one of his old family members, I think it's his great-grandfather or something, who says, like, when I was a bullfighter, I fought without a sword, because swords are for cowards. Boom, trampled by a bull, he's dead. <laughs> Another one, when I fought, I fought three bulls at once, because fighting less than three bulls is for cowards. Boom, 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 dead. And so on and so forth. <laughs> And the other guy, Joaquin, is a soldier and was pretty much destined to be a soldier from childhood since he was always a very strong fighter. Although early on during the bet, Hibaba tries to cheat a little bit by giving him some magical amulet of invincibility plus four. Something to that effect. So he, he was already a great fighter before, but throw in the invincibility and he's pretty much unstoppable. And of course, his wooden figurine is wrecked is represented by this huge guy who's got a chest that's about as big as five normal people. <laughs> He's, dude is huge. I love the way these characters are designed. And, you know, he's not the most tactful person in the world. He's, he definitely acts like a dumb jock at times, but still a very good guy. And, of course, we have Maria, who is very intelligent, very strong-willed, and early on in the story, is sent off to study abroad in Spain, and when she comes back, she's, of course, a fountain of knowledge, thanks to all her academic studies abroad, but can also hold her own in a fight, it turns out, as she knows a bit of kung fu, which she studied in Spain. Not the first place I would look for a kung fu master. To, um, but, uh, well, but who knows, maybe some... Chinese guy emigrated there at some point, or some Spanish guy was studying abroad in China, learned the Kung Fu over there, brought it back. Who knows? But anyway, as far as the cast goes, whoever did the casting for this movie, man, they went all out. There are a ton of big names in this movie. Um, it, not just for the major characters, but even some of the side characters as well that are just, you know, show up once in a while for comic relief. They still got some pretty recognizable names in here. Um, Diego Luna plays Manolo, does a Fantastic job with that. Uh, Channing Tatum plays Joaquin. Wouldn't be my first choice for someone doing the voice of a Mexican soldier, but you know what? He actually did a pretty good job, and I normally am not a fan of Channing Tatum's acting. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone in that, but it, he was fine in this movie. Uh, Zoe Saldana plays Maria. Does a fine job with that role. Uh, Ron Perlman is the voice of Hibalba. And I felt kind of stupid when I saw his name in the credits at the end because I did not recognize him at all. I kept thinking, man, this guy sounds familiar. I just couldn't place it. But of course it's Ron Perlman. And he was awesome because he's Ron Perlman. Uh, Christina Applegate is in this. Uh, Hector Elizondo. Uh, Ice Cube. Of all people, <laughs> is a voice actor in this movie. He plays the candle maker who is basically the spirit that watches over the souls of the living, who are all represented by these candles. And, you know, when someone passes on, the candle is extinguished. And he's largely a comic relief character, and fortunately, they don't push this character too far. They easily could have taken him way too far, so he became annoying. They reeled him in just enough. There were a couple lines where I thought, eh maybe pushing the joke a little too far, but it's it's not overdone, and for the most part, he was actually very funny. Um, also, you got Danny Trejo, Cheech Marin, Gabriel Iglesias, Eugenio Derbez, who you may remember from my Jack and Jill review. You know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, that guy. It turns out he does good movies, too. <laughs> so, so he's got that going for him. Um, oh, and another voice actor that I didn't recognize right away, but... Felt a little silly for not recognizing the voice until I saw the name in the credits. Uh, one of Manolo's ancestors uh, was not just a bullfighter, but also a very talented singer. Uh, so I guess he's got both skills running in the family. And every time this character's singing, I'm thinking, man, this guy's got a really good voice. And I'm thinking I should know who this is, but for some reason I don't. It's Placido Domingo. Yes, that Placido Domingo. They, they decided just a regular guy with a good voice. No, that's not enough. We need to get the greatest freaking tenor on God's green earth in this movie. Holy shit. Uh, 
that's, yeah, amazing job with the casting here. Um, as far as the, uh, the writing and the dialogue and whatnot, uh, there is a lot of comedy in this movie. Um, I was not expecting it to be as funny as it was, but this, this is a definitely a laugh out loud movie at many moments. Um, the jokes hit far more often than they miss. Um, the dialogue, this is kind of a mixed bag. There's a, they do work in a lot of modern slang into the script, uh, which th there were a few times where it kind of took me out of it. Although, but like when uh, there's a moment where Joaquin actually says, come at me, bro. Like, really? R really? You're going that far? But I, I get why they did it because, you know, th this is a story that is being told to modern day children and the audience is really just along for the ride. So it would kind of make sense that someone telling this story would throw in a bit of modern slang just so the kids have something more on their level that they can relate to. You know, so in a way it does actually make sense. So I get why they did that, but a few moments where it kind of took me out, but it wasn't too bad. For the most part, it worked. Um, the music in this movie, very well done. Uh, some of it is original music that was composed for this movie. At other times, they use uh, some popular music that's given a bit of a Mexican twist. Uh, you got a little bit of Elvis Presley, a little bit of Radiohead, um, a bit of Biz Marquee. I'm not kidding. <laughs> There's, there, there are these three mariachi guys that follow Manolo around for a part of the movie, and... At some point when Manolo was trying to figure out how to win the love of Maria, they're like, oh, you just gotta sing the right song. And then suddenly you have Cheech Marin singing, <laughs> singing Bismarck Key. Oh my god, I've... That, I, I just about lost it at that moment. That was so awesome. Oh, man. And they throw in a bit of the ecstasy of gold as well, which is always good to hear in any movie. Um, I think that's about everything I can talk about here. Really, the only thing left to say is, if you have not seen this movie, you need to. I have no reservations about recommending this one. It is well worth seeing. It's even worth the 3D surcharge. So, go and see it. See The Book of Life, and enjoy. Take care. The Book of Life. Hold it! I know exactly what to play! You! You got what I need! Wow, that totally captivated her.